Hello students, uh, today we will be dealing with serials, their structure, composition, processing, storage and uses. To start with, first we will talk about the structure of cereal grain. In general, all cereal grains have these same parts in approximately the same relationship to each other. Bran or pericarp is the first layer, the outer layer epidermis of the cereal consists of thin walled wrong rectangular cells. Next to the epidermis is a hypoderm of varying thickness. The seed coat or testa is a thin single or double layer. The inner layer of testa of wheat is often deeply pigmented which gives the grain its characteristic color. Next to the uh, testa is the aluron cell layer one of the most important layers nutritionally. The endosperm is surrounded by one or more layers of cells which is known as aluron layer. In wheat, the layer is a single layer of thick walled cubicle cells and constitutes 7 percent of grain weight. The cells contain about 20 percent of protein, oil and mineral matter. The cells are also rich in nicotinic acid. The aluron cells also contain tiny grains of phytic acid with some protein. Now comes the main layer or the majority of the cereal grain portion is made up of endosperm. The endosperm itself consists of cells of various sizes, shapes and different composition. The endosperm cell consists mainly of starch and protein, the starch being in the form of spherical granules which are single or tightly packed together and they are embedded in a matrix of protein. The size and shape of the starch granule in the endosperm cells vary from one cell to another. Next is the embryo. The germ or the embryo consists of many parts. It is separated from the endosperm by scutellum which has the function of mobilizing the stored food in the endosperm and transmitting them to the embryo when the grain germinates. The germ and scutellum are very nutritious and they are rich in protein and fat. Most of the B vitamins in the grain are present in the scutellum. Let us have a look at the nutritional contribution or composition. Energy, cereals are the main source of energy and contribute about 70 to 80 percent of the total energy requirement. On an average, 100 grams of cereals give about 340 kilocalories of energy. Energy is contributed chiefly by carbohydrates, especially 80 percent of the dry matter of cereals is carbohydrates. The two carbohydrates present in a cereal grain are crude fiber and soluble carbohydrate. The fiber constituents are cellulose, hemicellulose and pentosans which are all concentrated in cereals. Small quantities of dextrin and sugars are also present. Free sugars include glucose and disaccharides like sucrose and maltose. Of all the cereals, whole wheat, ragi and bajra contain high amount of fiber. Protein. The protein content of different cereals varies. Rice contains less amount of protein compared to other cereals. Higher concentrations of protein occur in the embryo, scutellum and aluron layer than in the endosperm, pericarp and testa. The types of protein present in cereal grains are mostly albumins, globulins, prolamines and lutelins. Prolamines are also known as gliadins. The proportion of these proteins differ in different cereals. The gliadins and glutelins are known as gluten proteins. Now this gluten protein when it is formed in combination due to gliadins and glutelins has unique elasticity and flow properties which are used for baking bread and other products. Mostly the protein content of cereals varies from 6 to 
12 percent and this protein is deficient in the essential amino acid lysine. More than 50 percent of protein requirement is provided by cereals because we consume large quantities of them in our daily diet. Among cereals, rice protein is of higher quality than the protein from other cereals and millets. Cereals when consumed with pulses, the protein quality improves due to mutual supplementation. Cereals are deficient in lysine and they are rich in methionine whereas pulses are deficient in methionine and they are rich in lysine. Hence, there is improvement in protein quality of both the proteins when they are consumed together in combination. Lipids. Lipids are rare, pr rarely present and they are present to a very minor extent of 1 to 2 percent in wheat and rice and 3 percent in maize. But most of these lipids of cereal grains are found in the germ and the outermost layer called as bran than other parts of the grain. Minerals, about 95 percent of minerals of the cereals are phosphates and sulphates of potassium, magnesium and calcium. A large portion of phosphorus in cereals is present in the form of phytin or phytates. Phytates present in cereals, they decrease the absorption of iron. Unrefined cereals contain more phytates than refined or polished cereals. On germination of the grains, the phytate content reduces due to enzymatic breakdown and there is an improvement in the iron availability. Some mineral elements like copper, zinc, manganese are also present but in very small quantities in cereals. So, cereals are poor sources of two important minerals such as calcium and iron. Rice is a very poor source of these two elements. Ragi is a rich source of calcium and iron. Millets such as bajra, jowar are rich in minerals and fiber. The iron content of wheat is increased during milling where iron rollers are used. Let us see the vitamin content of cereals. Whole grain cereals are an important source of B vitamins in our daily diet. Since most of these vitamins are in the outer bran, cereals do not contain either vitamin A or C except maize which has small amount of carotenes. Oils from cereal grains are rich in vitamin E, especially the germ portion of the cereals which contains high amount of oils is used to extract vitamin E. Enzymes which are found in cereals include amylases, proteases, lipases, oxidoreductases. Upon germination, alpha amylase activity increases. Now, let us look at the specific cereals, barley. It belongs to the genus Hordium. The biological value of barley protein is less than that of wheat. Barley has very little gluten and good quality bread or chapatis cannot be produced by barley. But barley is mostly used for malting and extraction of liquor, oats. Oats is also known as Avena sativus, one of the most nutritious cereals. The oats contain around 13.6 grams of proteins and uh, 62.8 grams of carbohydrate. The grain of oats contain considerable quantities of B vitamins. The fat content of oats is uh, high and the grain contains an active lipase. The protein of the oat kernel does not form gluten, therefore it is not suitable for making chapati or bread. In oats, there is significant amount of beta glucons. These beta glucons are soluble dietary fiber which reduce the serum cholesterol synthesis. Next is rye, R Y E. Rye belongs to the genus C kale. This is an important crop mostly grown in Eastern Europe. Rye crop is grown in India over a limited area in the northwestern Himalaya. The proteins in rye contain very little gluten 
and only produce satisfactory uh, bread volumes and crumb structure when they are mixed with wheat. Now looking at the nutrient content of millets, jowar compared to rice, jowar is rich in protein but the quality is not as good as rice protein. There is an imbalance between leucine and isoleucine essential amino acids in jowar which interferes with the conversion of tryptophan to niacin causing deficiency of niacin. Therefore, people who subsist or whose diets are majorly based in jowar, uh, they suffer with niacin deficiency. Jowar is rich in carbohydrates and B complex vitamins. It is poor in carotene but rich in dietary fiber. Next is ragi or we call it as finger millet. Nutritionally, it is almost as good as or better than wheat or rice. The nutritive value of ragi is better than that of rice and most other cereals. This ragi is rich in calcium, phosphorus, iron. The calcium content is higher than common cereals and millets. It also contains B vitamins but it is a poor source of riboflavin and the major proteins of ragi are prolamines and glutalins. They contain all essential amino acid. Next we have maize or corn like any other cereal is rich in calories. It contains around 11 percent protein and this protein is deficient in tryptophan and lysine. It is a good source of carotene and it contains good amount of thiamine, riboflavin and niacin. Bajra it is also known as pearl millet. Among millets bajra is the predominant crop in India. It has the same quality of protein as wheat and the protein content varies between 8.8 .8 to 16 percent. The protein contains high proportion of prolamines followed by globulins and albumins. Pearling improves the appearance and taste of the products. More than 50 percent of the phosphorus is present as phytin which is a major factor for the poor digestibility of the bajra grain. So as we now we will see the processing and the products of cereals and millets. Cereals and millets undergo different types of primary processing to enable their further use for product manufacture or cooking, milling that is for rice. In this before milling paddy is cleaned and dehulled. In dehulling the coarse outer layer of bran and germ are removed. So paddy is milled in India either by home pounding or in mechanized rice mills. The process of milling involves the following steps. Rice is first after cleaning passed through two stone disc for dehulling and after dehulling where the harsh husk is removed the rice that is obtained is known as brown rice. This is then milled in a machine uh, called perler which removes the outer coarse layers of bran and germ by a process of rubbing, which results in unpolished milled rice. Some of the rice breaks at this stage. Unpolished rice is also liable to develop rancidity. So therefore, next step is polishing uses a brush machine to get polished rice. The polished rice is further treated sometimes in a device known as trombol to give a coating of sugar and talc to produce a brighter shine on the grains. Now most varieties of coarse rice are not highly polished. According to the Indian government rules, the rice should be polished only to an extent of 5 percent. If rice is milled and polished beyond 10 percent, then most of the thiamine is lost. The degree of milling determines the amounts of nutrients removed. So understand here that the more the rice is polished, more the loss of nutrients and more whiter the rice, less the nutrient content especially in terms of B complex vitamins. Losses during milling can be compensated by various methods. 
first the rice can be under milled one need not polish it to a very large extent in unpolished rice the loss of nutrients can be reduced rice is under milled so there is white luster but at the same time it is subjected to insect infestation a second method is of increasing the vitamin retention by processing the rough rice prior to milling this process is called as parboiling another method of remedying the losses in the milling are artificial enrichment of the grain wherein a premix of various vitamins is developed which is applied on the grain now let us look at one of the most popular processing techniques called as parboiling and mostly it is followed in kerala parboiling is a process of soaking paddy in water at 65 to 70 degrees for 3 to 4 hours the water is drained and the soaked paddy is steamed in the same vessel for 5 to 10 minutes the paddy is dried in the sun or mechanically dried let us see what advantages do we get if it is the rice is parboiled first of all dehusking of parboiled rice is easy that means the outer harsh cover comes away easily grain becomes tougher resulting in reduced losses during milling so it eliminates breakage completely milled parboiled rice has greater resistance to insect damage loss of nutrients due to the removal of husk and bran in milling are decreased so during harvesting the vitamin and mineral present uh, are dissolved and seeped into the endosperm so part of the scutellum and germ which are rich in b vitamins get fixed to the grain therefore there is less losses of b vitamins loss of water soluble nutrients due to washing of rice are reduced in parboiled rice parboiling improves the digestibility and protein availability is higher parboiled rice will not turn into a soft glutinous mass when it is cooked parboiled rice swells more when it is cooked to the desired softness parboiling stabilizes the oil content of the bran and the oil globules in the aluron layer are ruptured into a band by parboiling but at the same time there are one or two disadvantages of parboiling sometimes parboiled rice has very unpleasant smell and it changes in its color it becomes more yellowish modern methods of parboiling have eliminated this problem by controlling soaking and steaming another very popular processing technique which enhances the nutritional value of cereals is malting malting is a controlled germination process which activates the enzymes which are resting in the grain and in the conversion of cereal proteins and other macromolecules generally barley is the grain which is used in the production of malt but other grains which are used for malting include wheat jowar and ragi the process of malting consists of after cleaning the grain soaking it in water for about 36 hours with changing the water two to three times then after that the grain whole grain soaked grain is spread over the wire meshes for a period of 2 to 3 days and water is sprinkled on this meshes and the grain 2 to 3 times now during germination amylases and enzymes such as proteases are formed the amylase act on starch hydrolyzing it to dextrin and proteases act on protein hydrolyzing them to simpler fractions called peptones the malted food products are also called as amylase rich food or arf which is germinated cereal flours like for example ragi germinated ragi flour is called as arf they are excellent weaning foods because they reduce the bulk of weaning foods and are dense in energy malt is used in pharmaceutical preparations breakfast cereals malted milk products infant foods bakery products candies 
and brewing of alcohol or wine. The processed products include rice flour which is used for refrigerated biscuit manufacture to prevent sticking. It is used in baby foods as a thickener in pancake mixes. In India mostly rice flour is used in the preparation of vermicelli, uh, papad and in a number of other preparations or snacks. Parched rice is prepared by throwing rice into the sand heated to a high temperature in an iron or earthen pan. On stirring the rice begins to crackle and swell. Then the contents of the pan are removed and sieved to separate the parched rice from sand. Parched rice is crisp product which is used with uh, mixing it with buttermilk or milk. But another popular variety of rice product is puffed rice from paddy. It is popularly known as murmuralu. Paddy is soaked in water for about to increase the moisture. The moist paddy is puffed by subjecting to sudden heat treatment. The husk splits off and the rice is puffed. This puffed rice prepared in the above manner is made into uh, you know laddus. It is also used in snack foods, breakfast cereals and it is a popular street food in some parts of the world and also in our country and it is one of the most popular chaat items called as bhelpuri and it is also used as prasadam. Now I am going to talk about rice flakes or what we call beaten rice. It is popularly known as poha. In this the rice in the form of paddy is soaked, toasted and then it is immediately subjected to flaking by pounding with heavy iron pestles or rollers. Now it is widely used in India for the preparation of snacks and very surprisingly because iron pans are used and heavy iron rollers are used, the rice flakes have a higher iron content than rice. Next is rice starch. Rice starch granules are very small and they have to be extracted from the protein matrix and rice starch is therefore used in puddings ice creams and custard powder. Breakfast cereal foods which are also called as ready to serve breakfast cereal foods. These are manufactured in different parts of the countries and they have become very popular. They include flaked breakfast cereals, puffed breakfast cereals, shredded and granular breakfast cereals and puffing by extrusion. Now wheat, milling of wheat. Wheat is consumed mostly in the form of flour obtained by milling the grain, whole wheat flour. It contains the finely ground bran, germ and endosperm of the whole wheat kernel. Paustic atta. Wheat flour is fortified with defatted soya flour and it is called as paustic atta. This not only improves the quantity and quality of protein but also improves the functional characteristics of moisture retention and less absorption of oil in the end product. Maida, the bran and germ are separated while making white flour or maida. It is more bland in taste and it is mostly from endosperm. Its nutrition value is much less when compared to whole wheat flour. Semolina or Bombay Rava as we call it. It is coarsely ground endosperm and its chemical composition is similar to that of maida. It is roasted before storing to save it from insects. We have macaroni products. These products are also called pasta products or alimentary paste. These products include macaroni, spaghetti, vermicelli and noodles. Wheat germ is about 2 to 3 percent of wheat grain. It has very good nutritional value compared to animal protein. Presently wheat germ is not separated during milling. Wheat bran that is the outer coarse covering of the wheat. It is a bulk producing agent and it is used to treat constipation. Triticale it is a hybrid cereal from cross between wheat and rye. The flour is suitable only for biscuit making. 
maize. Uh, the method used for processing is dry milling. The whole corn is ground into meal of high fiber as well as high protein content by stone grinder without removing the germ. After grinding, certain amount of germ can be removed from the meal. The wet milling process consists of cleaning, soaking, germ separation, grinding, hull recovery, etc. The next product of maize is degerminated maize flour. This mostly consists of the endosperm and it has low content of B vitamins. We have corn germ oil, it is extracted by solvent extraction and popcorn. The popping of corn is a method of starch cookery. As the kernels of popcorn are heated, the water vapor within them expand, increasing the pressure until it is sufficient to make the kernels explode or pop. Next product of maize is corn starch. This is made by a process of wet milling. Starch is then washed, dried, powdered. Corn starch is widely used because it is inexpensive. Corn starch flavored with vanilla and containing ed edible colors is sold in the market as custard powder. So, let us now look at the uh, certain other millets and the cereals and their storage. Storage is a critical component of the cereals after harvest. Food grains are usually stored till the next harvest season for home consumption. For best storage performance, the produce must be thoroughly cleaned, graded, dried to a safe storage moisture level of 10 to 12 percent and it can be stored for 6 to 12 months. Storage structures should be properly repaired, cleaned and disinfected. Structures should bear the load of seeds stored and do not permit contact with outside humid air. The structures should be constructed in the coolest part of the house or the farm. Maximum protection should be given by the storage structure against pest, molds, rodents, birds, etc. They should provide necessary process uh, facility for inspection, disinfection, loading and unloading, cleaning and reconditioning. The storage structure should protect grain from excess moisture and temperature. It should be economical and suitable for a particular situation. As a result of infestation, a part of the grain is eaten away by insects and there is a change in the taste, flavor and hygiene quality is affected. Now, if improperly stored, the nutritive value and the protein value of B vitamins is very much affected. So, therefore, the grain should be stored uh, properly drying in the sun to an optimal moisture reduces damage also by fungi. Now, let us see the role of cereals and millets in food preparation. Cereals are the main source of energy in our daily diet provide about 70 to 80 percent of energy. Now, wheat, rice, etc not only in the form of wheat and rice, but they use it in the form of dosa, ragi flakes, paisam, ragi porridges, etc. Batters used for idli and dosa and doughs can be prepared using a combination of various cereal flours. The cereals are excellent source of starch and B vitamins. Cereal flours can be used as thickening agent in custards, white sauce, and soups, etc. Maida paste can be used in cutlets, bread crumbs in cutlets, one can make halwas, other desserts, weaning foods, beverages, cornflakes, and we use cereal and pulse combinations mostly to make a breakfast foods in South India. Very, very popular dishes such as idli, dosa, and in the West or Gujarat, etc., Dhokla. So, students, here we are completing uh, entire uh, work or chapter on cereals, which includes the structure, the nutrient composition, the processing, the products, storage, and how the cereals can be used in the everyday 
diet so i hope you have enjoyed the class